All right, today we're going to be going over fundamentals, exam one, review, you understand? Are you ready? We're going to be going over, uh, first thing I think is gas exchange, and the second thing I think is um, mobility. Okay, so, sputum culture. Do you think you can delegate a sputum culture? Yes, you can. How do you obtain a sputum culture? So you get it by suctioning into a sterile suction trap or having a patient cough and expirate, expectorate into a sterile cup. So before we do the sputum culture, what are we not going to have the patient do? No using any toothpaste or mouthwash before it. So what are they actually going to do during that sputum culture? Like how are we going to get that sputum? So three to four, slow deep breaths, exhalation, then full inspiration, followed by a full or full cough. And we want to get five to ten milliliters of sputum. All right. TB screening. Um, so if obtained, culture of acid bath. All right. Peak flow meters. Do we think we can delegate peak flow meters? They can be. Not initially, but only we can delegate to a, a stable client. What is a peak flow meter um, measure? Expiratory flow for patients with asthma or reactive airway disease. Um, and proper use can identify an exasperation before clinical signs appear. Okay. And we know the airway branch assessments, ABCs, life support, choking, croup strider, inflex, and stuff like that. All right, med admin. Can we delegate med admin? No, you cannot delegate it. All right. Meter dose inhaler. Um, how many seconds do we have to wait between puffs if it's the same med? Thirty to sixty seconds. What if it's a different med? Two to five minutes. Uh, are we going to use steroids or bronchodilators first? Bronchodilators, and once we do um, all this meter dose inhaler, um, what are we gonna do at the end to avoid getting thrust or sores or yeast in the mouth? Yes, we're gonna wash it out. All right, what is a nebulizer? Adds moisture to the meds, which helps in loosening secretions. All right, what are chest tubes? So catheter inserted into the thorax to remove air or fluids from the pleural space, prevent air or fluids from entering the pleural space, or reestablish normal thoracic pressure, so like normal thorax or hemothorax, compress the lungs. So um, we're going to keep the system closed at all times and below the chest as big so it can drain. Monitor any bubbling on the system. Water level should fluctuate between each breath. And you want to measure the drainage at each shift, and you want to encourage turning, coughing, deep breathing, and sense of spirometry with chest tubes as well. All right, can we delegate artificial airways? No, you cannot. So we have oral airways, um, endotracheal tubes, and tracheostomies. Oral airways are only on unconscious patients, all right? An ET tube doesn't necessarily need to be connected to a machine. Do you think we can delegate suctioning? Yes, we can, but we have to assess the respiratory status before we can, all right? So what are some uh, risk factors for suctioning? Impaired cough or gag reflex, weak respiratory muscles, and decreased LOC. So with suctioning, we want to assess for epoxy and have O2 available, too. So how are we going to... So when we suction, we're going to suction the cheek pockets, never straight down the throat. And with bulb suctioning, make sure to fully depress the bulb before putting it into the mouth. All right, so what are some ways we control secretions when suctioning? Increase fluid intake to thin secretions, encourage cough and deep breathing. All right, so what is chest physiotherapy? External chest wall manipulation, including vibration, percussion, and postural drainage. And how, what are we going to do to determine what areas need postural drainage? 
use an x-ray. All right, and since it's spirometry, can we delegate this? Yes, we can, but we have to educate them before delegating it. Why do we use the incentive spirometry? It's assisting with deep breathing, so you use visual feedback for long, deep breaths. So you got to breathe in to raise the platform. All right. Non-invasive, positive pressure ventilation. You got CPAP fits over, over nose. By BPAP fits over um, nose and mouth. Supplies inhalation, exhalation pressure. All right, talk about mechanical uh, ventilators. <laughs> positive pressure to inflate lungs or negative pressure that removes air from the patient's chest wall and forces them to inhale. All right, can you delegate oxygen administration? E no, because it's a med and you have have a patient order. And we can't give it to someone that artificial. Okay, nasal cannula. What? How many liters a minute does that deliver? One to six. At what percentage? Twenty-four to forty-four percent. All right, Venturi mask. What? How many liters a minute does that deliver? Four to fifteen liters a minute. At what percentage? Twenty-four to fifty percent. Hundred percent non-rebreather mask. How many liters does that deliver a minute? 10 to 15 liters a minute. At what percentage? 60 to 90 percent. Simple face mask. How many liters a minute does that deliver? 6 to 12 liters a minute. At what percentage? 35 to 50 percent. Partial rebreather. How many liters does that deliver? 8 to 12 liters a minute. At what percentage? 50 to 70 percent. Good job. All right. Tell me about ventilator associated pneumonia may be seen as deterioration in patient status after improvement you might see infection inflammation they must be on oxygen for two plus days all right what's gas exchange All right, process by which O2 is transported to the cells and CO2 is transported from the cells. We know inspiration is active and expiration is passive. What does surfactant do? Increases surface tension and keeps the alveoli open. What is atelectasis? Happens when alveoli collapse and can no longer exchange gas. What is asthma? Initially a problem getting air out, but as the air builds up in the lungs, they begin to struggle to pull any more air in. What does oxygenation mean? The delivery of oxygen to the tissues and cells in the body. What is perfusion? The ability of the cardiovascular system to pump oxygenated blood to the tissues and deoxygenated blood to the lungs. What is hypoventilation? Alveolar ventilation decreases and CO2 increases. What are some examples that would cause hypoventilation? Atelectasis, COPD, and asthma. What are the symptoms of hypoventilation? Decreased O2 sats, shallow breathing, coughing, adventitious breath sounds, mental status changes, dysrhythmias, cardiac arrest, convulsions, unconsciousness, and death. What is hyperventilation? CO2 increases in the body. Rate and depth of respiration increases. What are some examples that would cause hyperventilation? Anxiety, fever, drug overdoses, F and E imbalances, and Kuzmalls. What are the symptoms of hyperventilation? Rapid respiration, sighing breaths, inhalation longer than exhalation, deeper respirations, lightheadedness, and tingling. So when would we see Kuzmalls in hyperventilation? 
severe metabolic acidosis. What is hypoxia? Deficiency of O2 at a cellular level. What are some causes of hypoxia? Hypovolemia, high altitudes, tissues, can't extract O2 from the blood, decreased diffusion, poor perfusion, shock, or trauma. What are the symptoms of hypoxia? Apprehensive, restless, inability to concentrate, decreased LOC, dizziness, can't lie flat, high pulse, respiration, and depth. And you can see hypoxia, but if you say hypoxia, that's a late sign of, uh, I mean, cyanosis is a late sign of hypoxia. All right, what are the goals of ventilation? We know um, ABGs, pulse locks, capnography, we know those. It's pretty easy. All right, mobility and safety. Um, actually, no. It's a good point to go review everything. Okay. Okay, so reviewing. Bronchoscopy is normally the sound of the patient's voice becomes less distinct as oscillation moves peripherally. Bronchoscopy is the phenomenon of the patient's voice remaining loud at the periphery of the lungs or sounding louder than usual over distinct area of consolidation such as in pneumonia. Agophony, an increased resonance of voice sounds heard when oscillating the lungs, often, ca often caused by lung consolidation and fibrosis. It is often, it is due to enhanced transmission of high frequency sound across fluids such as an abnormal lung tissue with lower frequencies filtered out. Okay, so sputum culture, it can be delegated. Sputum culture is obtained by suctioning into a sterile suction trap or having a patient cough and expectorate into a sterile cup. Um, don't allow the patient to use toothpaste or mouthwash prior to sputum culture. And during the, the test, we're going to take three to four slow, deep breaths with exhalation and full inspiration, followed by a forceful cough to obtain five to ten milliliters of sputum. TB screening, if obtaining culture for AFB, uh, three consecutive morning cultures should be obtained, all right? Um, peak flow meter can be, cannot be delegated initially, but can delegate for a stable client. It measures the peak expiratory flow for patients with asthma or reactive airway disease. Proper use can identify an exacerbation before clinical signs appear, but proper education is a must. Airway assessment, ABCs, choking, cough, stuff like that. Um, medication administration cannot be delegated to NAP. Meter dose inhaler. Um, um, know how to give the different meds, so wait 30 to 60 seconds between puff if it's the same med but two to five minutes if a different med, bronchodilators before steroids, and always wash your mouth af after as well. So use a nebulizer to add moisture to the meds, which helps in loosening secretions. For chest tubes, it's a catheter inserted into thorax to remove air or remove or fluids from the pleural space, prevent air or fluids re-entering the pleural space, or reestablish normal thoracic pressures like pneumothorax or hemothorax compress the lungs. We want to keep the system closed at all times and below the chest so it can drain. Monitor for any bubbling in the system. A water level should fluctuate between each breath. Measure drainage each shift and occurs turning, coughing, deep breathing, and ascent of spirometry. All right. Artificial airways cannot be delegated to nap. Uh, we have oral airways for unconscious. We have ET tubes. Don't necessarily have to be on the machine. And tracheostomy. Got suctioning. Can be delegated to nap after assessing respiratory status. So oral pharyngeal suction using a yanker. We have uh, risk factors potentially that you can identify, like impaired cough or gag reflex, weak respiratory muscles, decreased LOC, assess for epoxy and have O2 available, never suction uh, straight down the throat, suction the cheek pockets. And then bulb suctioning, make sure to fully depress the bulb before putting it into mouth. Then we can control secretions during suctioning by increasing fluid intake to thin secretions and encouraging cough and deep breathing. Chest physiotherapy, uh, external wall, external chest wall manipulation, including vibration, percussion, and postural drainage. And in postural drainage, we use an x-ray to determine which areas need postural drainage. Since spirometry, this can be delegated to NAP after initial education. This assists with deep breathing. It provides visual feedback for long, deep breaths. Breathe into raised platform, and it's an independent nursing intervention, but you may need an order for payment. So non-invasive positive pressure ventilation is less invasive. CPAP fits over the nose and BiPAP fits over the nose and mouth and supplies inhalation and exhalation pressures. Mechanical ventilators, it's positive pressure to inflate lungs or negative pressure that removes air from the patient's chest wall and forces them to inhale. 
O2 administration, oxygen is a med, should have a PO order to a mid. Uh, application may be delegated to NAP. Assessment and order are RN responsibility. NAP may not administer O2, so I'm with an artificial airway, and we've got to know about fire safety. Nasal cannula delivers 1 to 6 liters a minute at 24 to 44%. It's a low flow or high flow, simple, effective, comfortable, used for all ages, short or long term. Some can have reservoirs. Venturi mask delivers 4 to 15 liters a minute at 24 to 50%. It's a high flow delivery device. It provides precise amount of oxygen, humidity added, administers constant fixed O2 concentration. The 100% non air breather delivers 10 to 15 liters a minute at 60 to 90%. Uses one way valves and is leak free, so exhaled air doesn't enter the reservoir bag. Maintains highest concentration oxygen supply in bag. Bag must be fully inflated, or patient may breathe in large amounts of CO2. The simple face mask delivers 6 to 12 liters a minute at 35 to 50%. It's useful for short term therapy and increases oxygen for short periods. Partial rebreather, 8 to 12 liters a minute at 50 to 70%. Same as non rebreather, but does not have a one way valve. Allows mixture of oxygen carbon dioxide in the mask. Dead space gas mixes with oxygen into the bag. Ventilator associating pneumonia may be seen as deterioration in patient status after improvement. Might have infection and inflammation. Patient must be on oxygen for two days. Gas exchange is the process by which oxygen is transported to the cells and oxygen is transported from the cells. Inspiration is active, expiration is passive. Surfactant decreases surface tension and keeps alveoli open. Atelectasis happens when alveoli collapse and can no longer exchange gas. Asthma is initially a problem getting air out, but as the air builds up in their lungs, they begin to struggle to pull out any more air. Oxygenation is the delivery of oxygen to the tissues and cells in the body. Perfusion is the ability of the cardiovascular system to pump oxygenated blood to the tissues and deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Hypoventilation, alveolar ventilation decreases and CO2 increases. Some causes, some um, things that might have hypoventilation include electasis, COPD, and asthma. Symptoms of hypoventilation can be decreased O2 sats, shallow breathing, coughing, adventitious breath sounds, mental status changes, dysrhythmias, cardiac arrest, convulsions, unconsciousness, and death. Hyperventilation, CO2 increases in the body. Rate and depth of respirations increase. You'll see hyperventilation and anxiety, fever, drug overdoses, F and E imbalances, and Kuz moths. The symptoms of hyperventilation be a rapid respiration, sighing breaths, inhalation, longer than exhalation, deeper respiration, lightheadedness, and tingling. And you'll see Kuz moths of hyperventilation and severe metabolic acidosis. Hypoxia is the deficiency of oxygen at a cellular level. Hypoxia can be caused by hypovolemia. High altitudes, tissues not being able to extract oxygen from blood, decreased diffusion, poor perfusion, shock or trauma. Symptoms of hypoxia are going to be apprehensiveness, restless, inability to concentrate, decreased LOC, dizziness, can't lie flat, high pulse, respiration and depth, and cyanosis, but cyanosis is a late sign at the goals of ventilation. And there's that right there. Now we're going to go over um, mobility and safety. All right. So we're going to identify complications of immobility for each body system and explain physiological changes that occur in mobility. All right. So what are some things that could potentially uh, happen in the respiratory system? Atelectasis, hypostatic pneumonia, and pulmonary edema. So what is atelectasis? It's a collapsed alveoli. So what are some of the nursing interventions we'll do for atelectasis? Scent of spirometry, getting them up and moving, and then turn cough, deep breathing. All right, what is hypostatic pneumonia? Airways don't clear because of increased secretions and they're at a greater risk for bacterial growth. What are some nursing interventions we can do for hypostatic pneumonia? Turn, cough, deep breathe and keeping them hydrated. And then what is a pulmonary embolism?
It prevents the oxygenation of the lung, uh, leads to chest pain, increases oxygen saturation, and leads to lightheadedness. What are some of the nursing interventions we can do for pulmonary embolism? So it says the same thing as DVT intervention. So like what I'm thinking is like rest. So like maybe um, get that bed rest and elevate the extremity above level the heart is ordered. And then like compression devices as well. All right. So what are some of the um, complications that could happen to the cardiovascular system because of immobility? Orthostatic hypotension, increased workload of the heart, and thrombus formation. All right, what is orthostatic hypotension? Twenty-point systolic drop or ten-point diastolic drop. What are some nursing interventions we'll do for orthostatic hypotension? Have them rise slowly from bed and use dangling as time to equilibrate. All right, um, how does the heart's workload increase due to immobility? It's due to dehydration, pulling of blood in the lower extremities, poor circulation, and it leads to increased oxygen consumption. So what are some nursing interventions for increased workload of the heart? Hydration and mobility. All right, what would we do for a thrombus formation? So don't let them get out of the bed or massage it to dislodge it. Use anticoagulants, potentially. Um, we use sequential progression devices to increase venous return to the heart, um, and it's a preventative measure. TED stockings. Titus at the ankle and looser as they go to increase venous return to the heart and keep edema down. Foot pumps and heel toe lifts to increase venous return to the heart, especially when sitting for long periods of time and prevents DVT. And then we can use Lovenox as an anticoagulant to prevent DVT. What are some of the complications that can occur in the GI system because of immobility? Decreased peristalsis, constipation, and decreased appetite. What can we do for constipation? Laxatives, stool softeners, enemas. What can we do for decreased appetite? Keep them hydrated and get them to eat foods rich in fiber. What are some of the complications of the musculoskeletal system that occurs because of immobility? Muscle loss, weakness, and disuse atrophy, and then disuse osteoporosis. What is muscle loss, weakness, and disuse atrophy? You aren't using it, it starts atrophy, but the muscle that is left wants to contract, so it leads to contractures. What can we do for this? Pass the range of motion, but never go beyond where the joint wants to go. What is disjuice osteoporosis? Immobility causes a bone resorption and it increases calcium loss from bone. And what's a joint contracture? It's like a foot drop, it's a permanent plantar flexion, so the foot cannot bend, and if it's severe, it's reversible. What would we do for this? Get them up and moving or in a chair at least, and then use splints or high top shoes to prevent a foot drop, or you can use footboards. All right, what are some of the complications uh, that can happen to the urinary system because of immobility? Urinary stasis, renal calculi, and infection. So things we'll do here is like well caffeinated, I mean well hydrated um, with non-caffeinated beverages and mobile or at least sitting them up. What are some things that can happen into the system as a result of mobility? Those pressure ulcers, specifically in like the ear, shoulder, elbow, hip, thigh, leg, heel, things like that. So um, make sure the um, skin is clean and dry. Braiding scale predicts likeness of skin breakdown and nutrition. Uh, what is friction? Movement of one surface across another surface as you so like as you pull a patient up in bed. What is shear? Movement of bony surfaces and skin against uh, bony prominences. What happens to metabolism as a result of mobility? It decreases um, metabolism. It's harder to break down fats, carbs, and protein. You're not as hungry, and you start to lose weight. 
Okay. So some risk factors for impaired mobility of caregivers. So caregivers use can use appropriate methods to prevent back injury. Don't try to do things by yourself. Um, many hospitals have a no lift policy. Uh, weight control, exercise, muscle strengthening, maintain good posture, lift properly. Okay, reviewing this. Um, Telectasis is so the complications in the respiratory system. Atelectasis, lapsed alveoli. Use incentive spirometer. Um, get them up, moving, and turn cop deep breathe. Hypostatic pneumonia. Airways don't clear because of increased secretions, and they are at a greater risk for bacterial growth. So turn cop deep breathe and keep them hydrated. And pulmonary embolism. It's so a decreased oxygenation of the lung, leads to chest pain, decreases O2 saturation, cause lightheadedness. So like, um, keep them rested, keep that extremity above the heart and like compression devices for cardiovascular system. You can get like orthostatic hypotension, it's 20 point dr systolic drop or 10 point diastolic drop. Get them to rise slowly and dangle over the bed. Uh, increased workload of the heart because you can get it due to dehydration, pulling of blood in the lower extremities, poor circulation leads to increased O2 consumption. Keep them hydrated and try to get them mobile. Then thrombus formation, we don't want them to get out of the bed or massage it because it could dislodge it and use anticoagulants potentially. Sequential depression devices, TED stockings, foot pops, and Levinox would be good. Then uh, GI system, we have decreased peristalsis and pinch the constipation. We can use laxatives, stool softeners, eminence for that. And decrease appetite, you can make sure they're hydrated and eat foods rich in fiber. And you can have like muscle loss, weakness, and disuse atrophy. Use passive range of motion for that. Disuse osteoporosis and joint contracture. Um, get them up and moving or in a chair at least. Use splints or footboards as well. And then the urinary system, you can have urinary stasis. Um, that becomes hard. Um, renal calculi, it's not flushed out. Infection, so what we can do for these is hydration and get them moving or sit up at least. The integumentary system, we get the pressure ulcers, uh, make sure they're clean and dry, good nutrition, and then friction is movement of one surface across another surface, for example, pulling up a patient in bed, and shear is movement of bony surfaces and skin against the brownie promises. Metabolism decreases, metabolism of uh, nutrients breakdown decreases, appetite decreases, and you lose weight. Things like that. Kind of easy. Okay, now we're going to go over skills. All right, <laughs> what safety things do we need to know related to, I'll just read these to you to be honest, and uh, we can uh, we can go back over these. So, seizure precautions for safety. Um, we got to be careful with seizure inducers, lack of sleep, hormones, and stre set, stress. So, set up suction in patient's room if they have a history of seizures. Um, don't put the anchor in the patient's mouth because they might break their teeth. Um, do check suction by using a small amount of water in a cup to make sure it's working. Uh, if they have a seizure, time the seizure to tell. Time the seizure because it tells how serious it is or if it has been affected by meds they are on. Uh, roll patient on side towards you. Um, pad bath rail. Pad, pad both rails. Put the bed in lowest position. And then don't ask the patient questions that concern or confuse them after seizures occur. And you don't need an order needed to set up two liters of oxygen if the patient is actively seizing. For delegation of seizure precautions, O2 setup can't be delegated because the RN must be the first to apply oxygen. They can assess patient risk for seizure. Assessing patient risk for seizure may not be delegated. Um, you can delegate making sure the environment's safe. And a suction setup may not be delegated. Okay, fire safety. Um, you want to know the evacuation policy of the hospital floor and practice procedures regularly. Um, learn which doors are smoke doors. Know location of med gas valves. Uh, say code red instead of fire and stay calm and reassuring. Um, fire light will blink when there is a fire, but listen to where it is before evacuating. Um, horizontal evacuation is moving patients from one smoke barrier to another, same floor, different area. Um, Fire extinguishers sh um, should only be used on small controllable fires. Uh, make sure patients have O2 supply and meds as needed. And you got race, it's rescue, alarm, contain, and evacuate, and then pass. Pull, pin, and base fire, squeeze, sweep from side to side, stuff like that. Um, fire safety measures can be delegated, but the nurse is ultimately in charge of organizing an evacuation if necessary. Hot therapy. Heat vasodilates and increases blood flow to the area. Um, promoting delivery of nutrients and removal of waste. Moist heat increases muscle ligament flexibility, relieves muscle spasms, penetrates more deeply than dry heat, but may cause burns, so like hot, compressed, steam, humidifier, and sits bath. Dry heat um, 
has less risk of burns, but increases fluid loss via sweating and causes drying of skin. Don't apply it directly to the skin and monitor the patient frequently. Be especially careful of spinal cord injury because patients, uh, they can't feel it. Then don't microwave heat or make your own heat pocket pack because of hot spots. Um, naps may apply heat unless it must be sterile because it is being applied to a wound. Cold therapy. <laughs> Uh, cold vasoconstricts, um, slowing bleeding and decreasing the risk of, risk of inflammatory release of inflammatory mediators, decreases edema and lowers the conduction of pain impulses. So you got price, so like protect, rest and restrict, apply ice, compress and elevate. Naps may apply cold. Feeding, clear liquid after surgery is um, water, apple juice, popsicles. Full liquids are milk, ice cream, strained soup, cream of wheat, pudding, pureed veg. Pureed includes easily swallowed foods like scrambled eggs, mashed potatoes, vegetables, and fruits. Soft diet is low fiber, easy to adjust it, like pasta, casserole, tender meat. High fiber are like fruits, vegetables, bran, oatmeal, dry fruits, includes carbs to relieve constipation, increase your motility. Check record before feeding patient and don't trust what they tell you what they can eat. A liquid is easier to aspirate. So you may need to add a thickener. So it's three thicknesses like nectar, pudding, and honey. Um, bed by the door is the A bed, and bed from the door is the B bed in semi-private rooms. Make sure to deliver the right food. For patient with COPD, make sure they rest before eating to conserve energy. Wash for pocketing, aspiration risk, and cueing may be necessary for people with dementia. And assisting a patient to eat can be delegated. Glucose testing, glycocyst hypoglycemia is more dangerous because the brain uses only sugar. Retest 15-30 minutes after giving them sugar and call in MD if it doesn't help. Normal blood sugar is 70 to 110. Use middle three fingers on the side to check sugar. Test babies on the side of the heel. Can uh, Checking blood sugar can be delegated, but RN must interpret the number. Telemetry, um, used for patients with AFib, heart failure, pacemakers, atherosclerosis, strokes, angina, surgery, meds, or electrolyte problems. It measures electrical activity of the heart, not the mechanics. A white, right, clouds over gra green grass, black smoke or red fire and chocolate close to the heart. Change electrodes one time per day and let the telemetry know when you need to take the leads off like for a bath. You can't delegate putting the electrodes on. PPE protects patients and nurse. Got contact enteric, airborne, droplet, Contact, standard, universal gloving. If patient has had an infection in the past 90 to 100 days, they go on contact precautions. And after five days, they would go on universal gloving precautions. Uh, standard is gloving and hand washing. Contact would be like MRSA, sepsis, and E. coli. Contact and tear, acetive. There's a huge difference between contact and contact and tear is that you need to wash your hands before, before after leaving because sanitizer doesn't kill the spores and contact and tear diseases. Droplet mass, you'd be like flu, RSV, pneumonia, ear loop or mass that tie because the droplets usually fall within three to six feet. And airborne mass like TB, varicella, especially fitted in 95 mask. Safe zone, no airborne safe zone, but droplet is minimal of six feet. Um, negative pressure rooms, N95 mask, person is highly contagious, so you will suck all the germs towards them. And the door must always stay shut because the air goes directly out to the hospital. Positive pressure, um, Pushes air away, so like chemo and cancer and transplant patients. Um, so donning is gown, mask, goggles, gloves. And doffing is gloves, gown, gloves, goggles, gown, mask. Um, caring for patients, isolation can be delegated to the, be delegated with RN, must instruct nap about precautions, session of patient status and type of care required may not be delegated. All right, oral care and shampoo, you're going to ask before and you can't delegate it. Shaving, um, okay, uh, ask before shaving or shampooing. Shampoo must be removed, so don't use too much. Toothlets, oral swabs, stimulate gums. <laughs> Brush dentures away from the gums, end line. Sink with towel. Um, remove top denture first. Allow patient to perform care if possible. Um, do not soak toenails or feet. Geriatric patients must have much more fragile skin, so be careful. Roll unconscious patient on their side. Make sure their gag reflex has been assessed and how the bed is 30 degrees, and you're going to lunch. Lower the bed, upside rails, nestle the patient, call light and re hand hygiene, and document oral care. You can't delegate all this. Bed making. 
Um, lay patient flat and leave clean sheet on top. Undo sides, bend knee, pull arm, turn, roll sheet towards them and assess skin. <laughs> Put pad lower so you can use it to slide patient up. Uh, treat patient with pain meds about 30 minutes before bed and bath making necessary. You may temporarily turn up oxygen if they get cyanotic while turning and then, then you're going to reset bed alarm, call light, and do aid it. You can assess delegating bed making, but keep in mind it's a good opportunity to get to know your patient. Perineal care, drape, bed blanket, and a diamond. Do everything you can do to preserve patient dignity. Face your body at an angle away from them so you aren't looking at their face. Retract and return foreskin. Clean area, uh, cleanest area first. We'll start with thighs, document problems, skin issues, and odors. You can't delegate this. Bed bath. Use bath blanket for warmth and dignity. Um, self, partial, or total patients depending on level system required. So you're going to do eyes first, inner, then outer, then face, then fingers, up arms, neck, axillary, chest, abdomen, legs, feet, perineal area, back, bottom of legs, and then bottom. You can delegate bed baths. Um, O2 delivery and devices. Oxygen is combustible and must be stored secure and upright. Be careful about skin breakdown on ears, nasal septum, bridge of the face. Um, no electronic radiators, cell phones went on oxygen. No petroleum-based products on the face or lips like Vaseline or chapstick because it will burn. <laughs> Don't place COPD patient on high levels for a long period of time because it takes away their epoxy drive. Uh, O2 placement can be delegated, but the RN must set up, assess, and do the education. O2 application needs an order, and it must be appropriate for the patient's needs. NAP cannot administer O2 to a patient with artificial airway. So suctioning nasal tracheal is sterile. Oral pharyngeal is non-sterile. Um, 100 to 150 uh, pressure for an adult. 100 to 120 for a a kid in 80 to 100 for an infant less than 12 months. You cannot delegate oral or pharyngeal surgery. Uh, may not be delegated after oral or, or pharyngeal surgery because of bleeding risk. Range of motion. Restore starting. Assess pain level. <laughs> surgeries. Scar tissue. Pre-existing conditions. Right, do active. Passive or active assisted. Stop when patients hurting. Look for any deformities or contractors. Apply pain meds first if necessary. Stop if joint is swollen, red, or tender. Um... Prone patients like bed, ret, bed bound, ICU, and conscious patients. Um, go head to toe and put patient prone or lateral to exercise hips and knees if using PRM. Passive range of motion. Uh, you can delegate range of motion exercises, but you must assess and give instructions to nap. Patients you don't do range of motion on without an order. Orthopedic trauma or spinal patients. Restraints can be physical, chemical, or mechanical. Uh, Center for medical care or Medicaid services sets limits for restraints. Um, restraints can cause pressure ulcers, pneumonia, incontinence, constipation, or death from complications. Restraints must be for immediate safety to patient, family, or staff. You must remove the restraints every two hours. More frequent rounding may be necessary, and you may need to put patient close to the nursing station. Remove restraints one at a time if you have a particularly violent patient. Restraints must be tied in two places to stationary parts of the bed. Esta assess vital signs. Skin, behavior, pain, bathroom needs, positioning, hydration, and allow opportunity for active and passive range of motion if appropriate. Bed alarms are the number one alternative for restraints. You need a order unless patient is very violent and then you have one hour to notify doctor and have them come and assess. You must document and change and plan a care and have a new order every 24 hours. You must document less restrictive interventions first and use least restrictive first and continue to try uh, less restrictive restraints documenting that you have tried them. Uh, if you discontinue restraints at any time, your order expires. The assessment of need for restraints and of the patient's orientation LLC cannot be delegated, but they are ordered. The nap can put them on. Hmm. Moving patients from bed to stretcher, or moving patients from chair to stretcher, from bed to stretcher to chair, some of that. Wide stance, use your legs, tuck in pelvis, raise bed ahead a, a little higher than stretcher, and make the bed a little lower uh, when returning patient to bed. Uh, make sure um, your roll pad is under patient's hips and shoulders. Put your strong leg in between the patient's knees. Work on the patient's strong side and put the wheelchair on the strong side. Moving patients can be delegated. So body mechanic lift, lower friction sheets. Use your core, legs, bend knees, and tuck pelvis. Synchronize bed height, working height, hip bones. Be careful to, of invasive lines and move catheter toward patient side. Is rolling to turn patient every two hours. Uh, watch for skin breakdown, especially due to moisture. 
friction, restraints, age, overweight, underweight, or poor nutrition. Positions, you got lateral, uh, supine, uh, low phallus, 30 to 45 degrees, semi phallus, 45 to 60, and high phallus, 60 to 90. You got Schindelberg, prone, you got sims for rectal exams, suppositories, or enemas. Um, friction is two rubbing surfaces against each other versus shear, bunching of skin, and two moving surfaces. Um, low friction sheets, rolls, board, maxi slides, lifts, trapeze. Uh, you can't delegate this. A uh, gate belt, snug, but two fingers can fit under it. Always walk on the patient's strong side with their weak side toward the wall if using a gate belt without an assist device. Can be delegated. Crutches and cane. Normal cane or walker. Uh, weak leg first, then strong. Hold cane about 10 to 15 centimeters away. Walk on patients' weak side if they have a cane and have them hold the cane on their strong side. Um, swing to or swing via when using crutches uh, with crutches going upstairs body first and then crutches and going down crutches first and then body you can't delegate this TEDs and compression devices provides constriction so it is harder for fluid to leak out of vessels take socks off first to assess skin these are contraindicated in patients with wounds swelling redness pinchal DVT window on the bottom of the socks allows you to assess the toes wear gloves sanitation and make sliding socks easier for knee-high socks, measure at the calf and from the heel to the pop to area. For thigh-high socks, measure at the calf, thigh, and from the heel to the gluteal fold. Uh, you can delegate these, and but RN must assess patient first. Must have an order for TED and compression devices.